We're going to begin our discussion of the state-space representation by first looking at how to find state variables of a system and also how to do linearization of a system. Brogan defines state variables in the following way. The state variables of a system consist of a minimum set of parameters which completely summarize the system's status in the following sense. If at any time t0, the values of the state variables x sub i of t0 are known, then the output y of t1 for t1 greater than t0 and the values x sub i of t1 can be uniquely determined for any time t1 provided the input u of t is known along that interval. In other words, the, the state variables are the parameters which help us understand how a system will evolve over time. Furthermore, Brogan defines the state in the following way. The state at any time t0 is a set of the minimum number of parameters x sub i of t0 which allows a unique output segment y of t along the interval t0 to t1 to be associated with the, each input segment u of t along the interval t0 to t1 for every t0 and for all t greater than t0. So in this, what Brogan is saying here is that the state is the collection of all the state variables which given some uh, in, given that initial condition, or all the values of that state, x of those state variables, x sub i, at some time t0, we can uniquely determine the output segment, or just the solution, y of t, along some interval with an input to that system along that interval, u of t. So you might ask the question, what is the minimum set of parameters required to determine the output of a differential equation at some future time t1? So here we're assuming our system is a linear, is a differential equation. And what is this minimum set? And the answer to this question is really quite simple. It is, in fact, the initial conditions. So even if the numerical value of the initial conditions are unspecified, we still need to use the initial conditions as placeholders during the process of integration in our attempt to solve the differential equation. To understand the concept of state and state variables, let's go ahead and look at an example. We're going to use the example of a invert a pendulum. So I would imagine a mass hanging from a massless rod of length L. I know that gravity is in play here. And I know that I'm going to define this angle as theta in the positive sense. And I'm going to allow for some torque to be applied, say, T sub C. And we know that I can write down the initial, uh, given uh, the equations of motion from the sum of moments equation as J alpha, which is J theta double dot. And I know that that's got to be equal to the sum of the moments acting. So I have the gravity minus MGL sine theta. And we also have this torque that's applied, TC, which is a function of time. We know that the inertia is ML squared for a point mass. So we end up with a set of uh, solving for the derivatives in theta. We end up with theta double dot is equal to G minus G over L sine theta plus T C over M L squared. Let's go ahead and let T C equal M G L U of T. So we end up finally with theta double dot is equal to minus G over L sine of theta plus g over l u of t. In this case here, t, u of t would be commanding in radians. So to solve for theta, if, let's say we wanted to do the following. Let's say we want to solve for theta and theta dot as functions of time. In other words, I want to solve this differential equation. Then the question would be, how many initial conditions we need? Well, we know that we need initial conditions on theta, and we need initial conditions on theta dot, so that we can solve this higher second-order differential equation. So we would need initial conditions for theta of t naught and theta dot of t naught. And 
in the sense of thinking about what our um, state variables would be, that's what we would need to define. These would be our state variables. Not the value of those variables at that time, but those variables established at some time would be our state variables. So the way we can write this all out is we say the following. We can let x of t be a vector which is formed by taking the position, the angulated position, and the angular speed, or and we put those in the entries of this vector, and we call this thing here the state vector. And going back to the differential equations, we can then show that, well, if I take the derivative of the state vector, that's just take the derivative of each element inside the state vector. And we have equations which give us uh, equality there. We know that theta dot is just equal to theta dot. And that's easy enough. And we saw that theta double dot was minus g over L sine of theta plus g over L u of t. We call this thing here f of x of t. But notice this is a vector. This is kind of a funny thing. It's a vector of functions. So here's one function. Here's another function. And each one of these functions is a function of the state vector, which contains theta and theta dot. So we say this is a vector of functions of the state vector. Finally, notice we could do the following. We could say that Let's let x1 of t equal theta of t, and x2 of t equal theta dot of t. So notice then we say we find that x1 dot is just equal to x2, and x2 dot is equal to theta double dot. By the way, x1 dot is just equal to theta dot. But we know uh, theta uh, double dot, or x2 dot, is just equal to minus g over L sine of theta, but instead of theta here, I'm going to use x1 plus g over L times u of t. We can put that all in the same kind of form that we have up uh, here in this expression for f of x of t. We can write the same sort of thing down here. We can say, well, then that means that x dot of t, so that's the derivative of the state vector, is equal to x1 dot and x2 dot, those are both functions of time, which is just equal to uh, x1 dot, but let's just, x1 dot just happens to be x2, and then x2 dot is going to be minus g over L sine of x1 plus g over L u of t. This is the same as first order form. And you may have seen this in Arrow 300 when you were looking at putting systems into the right form for the ODE45 function. Remember, for the ODE45 to work, you had to specify how the first derivative of each variable in the system was uh, defined. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So this is what we would call our state space representation. Notice that this system here, we would classify it as nonlinear time invariant, right? because we have a sign of a state variable here. So we could certainly go ahead then and we could certainly look, go ahead and look at that nonlinear time invariant system and look at linearizing our system. Well, in this case, the nonlinear term comes from sine of theta, which we're saying is sine of x1, which we can say is approximately x1. Now, and this is, this is for x1 much, much less than 1. And what we would end up with is that the state vector is equal to, uh, the derivative of the state vector would be x2 
and then minus g over l x1 plus g over l u of t. And we can write this out as a matrix 0, 1, minus g over l 0 times the state vector itself x1 and x2 plus a vector 0 g over l times the input u of t. We call this thing here A, and this thing here we call it B. This is the state matrix, and this is the input matrix. And now we can write in very general form that x dot of t is equal to A x of t plus B times u of t. And this works for all linear time invariant systems. We can always put a linear time invariant system in this form. Now, I went through this linearization pretty quickly, but for more on linearization, I would encourage you to go look up the Jacobian. The Jacobian is a generalized way of looking at linearization. Now, remember that linearization is ultimately approximating a function with a line that would go through that point and is tangent to that curve. So for us, if we think about here's t and here's sine of t, then that function sine of t does something like this. And we're saying that around 0, I can approximate the value of sine of t with a line that goes through the origin. Now obviously as I get farther away from the origin, or sorry, from t equals 0, that linearization is no longer good. And in fact, say out here, at say 2 pi, the linearization would be a flat line like that. So it's clear that the linearization is a function of time in some sense here. And the Jacobian can handle all this. And not only is it a function of time, or it can be, but it can also be a function of where we're linearizing about. And that, that's uh, very much wrapped up in this linearization theory of this Jacobian. So to complete our description of the system, we have this is this whole thing here is known as the state equation because it tells us that for some input, and this is where the idea of state comes from, for some input, I can if I can solve this differential equation and I have initial conditions which tell me my state, I can tell I can find the solution to this differential equation. Now it might be complicated, we might have to do it numerically we're going to find that we can write the solution down pretty easily analytically. But for now, we know that we could certainly solve this system of equations just as we could solve this system of equations up here. The other thing we can look at is what are we going to actually measure? So if we say let's let y equal uh, some matrix and call it 1, 0 times the state x1 and x2 plus some matrix, call it 0, times the input, u of t, then notice this is just saying that we have y is equal to x1, which is just equal to theta. So all we're doing here is measuring theta. Now we could measure other things. We could measure the speed. We could measure both of these together. We, the measurement could be a function of the input, which is typically not very common. But this whole thing here, we call this matrix C. We call it the output matrix. And this here, we call it D. And this is called the feed-through matrix. Altogether, that gives us another equation which describes our system, which is just y is equal to c times x plus d times u. And these are functions of time. And this thing here is called the output equation. So the input equation along with the output equation together give us the full state space description of a linear time invariant system. In this example that we looked at, we had a massless rod attached to a mass 
and we used essentially polar coordinates to describe our system. We used theta and theta dot, and the radius here was fixed. Well, we could certainly imagine describing this system using a Cartesian grid, say with x and y, and we would have a position, and we can relate the position of the mass in terms of x of t and y of t, and then the speed in terms of x of t and y dot of t, sorry, y, x dot of t and y dot of t. It's also clear that the tangent of theta is just the x displacement over the y displacement. So x and y are related to theta, and we could take a derivative of uh, theta, or the tangent of theta, and show how theta dot is related to the derivatives of x and y. So in this case, theta and theta dot was the minimal number of state variables we needed, whereas x, y, x dot, and y dot would be four parameters, and that would be more than enough parameters that we need, but they're all related through this tangent of theta calculation. The using x, y, x dot, and y dot is not a minimal set of state variables, but it's a valid set of state variables. And it's, it's also clear that using polar coordinates in this case is more convenient than using Cartesian grid. But we could certainly use any of these representations. Another kind of uh, silly way of looking at this is that we could say that um, x1 of t is equal to theta of t plus pi. We can always have an offset there. And that would it's pretty easy to recognize that theta 2 in that case would just be theta dot of t, or x2 would be theta dot of t. We could say, well, let's let x1 of t equal, say, 2 times theta of t. So it's like a scaled uh, version of, of theta. And in that case, then x2 is going to be, say, 2 theta dot of t. And so here we, we're adding a bias, essentially, and here we're scaling. Either one of these is a valid set of coordinates. You're going to get a slightly different set of parameters in your state matrix and your input and output matrices. But you would still get the same solution to the set of differential equations.